In this upload, I'm gonna show you how to fix the P2015 or the intake manifold flat position implausible signal permanently for less than $100 on your Volkswagen TDI. So let's dive into this one. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. All right, tonight we're gonna learn something new. I've never done this before, but we are going to fix that infamous 2015 code. The internet says this is what the permanent fix is. I know the physical mechanics of how the flapper valve works, and this it makes sense. I've done my research. I've looked into what this code is caused by. I understand now what the dealership wants to replace, and I get it. Like, I really get it from a corporate business entity, you know, I get that side of life. And that they gotta, that they're trying to make money, and they can't verify that just replacing this will fix all of this if they don't do all of it because they call it one big system. Great. The awesome guys over at Diesel Geeks, I'll put their, uh, I'll put a link in the description below for you, made this. We don't need the bag. They made this. It is a $60 part, a $60 part. I think actually it's like $64.95 plus like $8 shipping. And you can permanently fix the 2015 or the, the P2015 code permanent for less than a hundred dollars that's not bad when this customer got an estimate of three thousand dollars wow you want to talk about saving thousands by learning something new that's thousands by learning something new so oh with their 60 dollar part look at that they even sent us a sticker so we're gonna have to find a place to put that up here someplace probably like that i think that looks good we'll find a place for it when i said let's learn something new i've never put one of these in and i've never taken one of those off but I've watched like 10 YouTube videos on it and I'm gonna be honest, I think this should only take me like 20 minutes to actually get off, probably 20 minutes to put back on, two minutes to put this on, so less than an hour all in, realistically. However, it's 627 right now and we're recording this. So it's probably gonna be like nine o'clock before I get out of here. With that said, let's dive into this. Let's see what it takes to get this intake flapper valve out of here. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. All right, before I get too far, I'm just gonna make a clear point. I know I said I wouldn't do DIY videos-ish back during Vlogmas, but this is one of those opportunities that I have that I can't pass up and I need to do a DIY. So, this vlog, this upload, today's vlog, I don't know what you wanna call it, we're gonna play double dutch. And we're gonna do two things, same time basically. So let's dive into it today. All right, now that we shed some light on the situation that's actually at hand here, everybody can see. All right, so it looks like this is not that bad. Once you get that line off of there, disconnect the plug. Remember, push in, push the tab, pull back, and they release really easy. But there's just a bolt down there, one there, one there. They look like T27, so we're going to grab a T27. Had to go get my T30. All right, that wasn't that bad. Now there's a spring back here. Where's that spring? Okay, the lever's right there. We're gonna pop that lever off. And then the spring looks like the spring goes back down there someplace. Uh, oh, it's on a little stud down there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little stud right down there. Let me grab a pick and I'll point. Let me grab a pick real quick here and I'll point this out. See if I can also get it, hook it and get it off of it. So right there is the spring. And it looks like we should just be able to pop that, yep, just you know, pop that right off of there. And we should just be able to pop that ball end right out of there as well. There we go. Perfect. That's not so bad. That was pretty easy, actually. It was actually really, really easy to get that out of there. Three bolts. Hmm. Is that what's wrong with this? Yep. Now that we got this thing off, now let's talk about what causes it. This is where I my Asian brain gets to shine a little bit, all right? So, we've identified what the code is. It is an intake manifold flat position in bank one implausible signal. Why does it say bank one? All right, first off, it says bank one because there are V6 TDIs and there might be V8 TDIs, I can't remember. Either way, that's why it specifies bank one. If you have a V6, you're gonna need two of these diesel geek. P2015 
piece system it fixed this problem on your v6 tdi like toreg stuff like that we don't have that so we don't care so here's what happened in the my other upload i was talking about how this how the ecu picks up a signal from this ranging from zero to 100 like a dial right the thing is is that this is not sitting at zero this is actually sitting in a dead zone or maybe like 10% or 5%, somewhere between maybe like zero and negative 10, we'll just say, okay? And what that's doing to the ECM is it's recognizing that the electronic sensors inside of this that pick up where this lever is, because here we can move it, right? That's, let's see if we can get it to max. That position right there is max and that is supposedly supposed to be zero isn't really zero it's more like negative 10. so it's like the ecm then says what the heck this piece that i'm told to monitor in this line of code inside the ecu says yo something is going on here this is not plausible you can't be doing this and it then triggers an error in the ecm which goes into a block of like internal memory that it's constantly being monitored by the system by the ecu of the car and every time it sees that or every time that variable of zero to negative 10 for this just general explanation is registered it adds another error fault and eventually enough of those add up and it says oh no we're throwing the check engine light boom there you have that code normal person goes to the dealer has this looked at and here, I'm gonna stop real quick. I'm not saying that you need to bypass all the hands-on diagnostics and verifying stuff. What I am saying here is that to fix this problem is not two or $3,000. It is not, I don't know how much one of these is, but we'll just say two or $300 intake flapper controller, module, stepper, whatever you wanna call it. In this particular case, a $60 part fixes this thing permanently because of the way it's designed. Something about the way this is designed. This is not a soft, actually, to be clear, you could, it is definitely doable, to go in and rewrite the software for the ECM. It'd be as simple as an update, no different than your cell phone, and update the software and tell it, hey, this is the actual position of zero, and it just starts over and it sees now zero to 100 instead of, zero to a hundred, if that makes sense at all. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me and I'm pretty sure it should make sense to everyone else. The general gist of what I'm saying though here is they could rewrite where zero is. That's all I'm getting at. But because no one's gonna do that, guy, awesome guys over at Diesel Geeks have came up with this option for you and we're gonna finish getting this thing installed and put back together. For the record, I have not asked them to do any collaboration. I've never used this part. From my research, and from maybe the 20 or 30 top results that I've seen that people have used this, this works every time. We're gonna find out how well it works. Once it's tripped, the system just keeps tripping it and tripping it and tripping it until this problem is fixed. So you wouldn't even be able to pass any mission test if you wanted to. $60 or $2,000. This thing really is just so clever for what it is. So what you do when you want to install this, there is a notch right there. And then there is a notch right there. Those notches got to go together. Pull this arm back a little bit. Slide that in there. Boom. And then you slide that over that. Put your bolt back in there. And there you go. Now you just got to install it back on the car. Put the ball, pop that ball back in. And then don't forget about your little spring here. This is probably going to be a little bit of a PETA. If you've ever done carburetor springs or emergency brakes or drum brakes, you'll know what I'm getting at. I think the phrase that I need to use here is the, the proof is in the pudding. You can get it back in there. I got it in there. There it is. Granted, I did drop the spring like eight times. I have the undercarriage cover off the car because I kept dropping the spring. Like it's got a little groove that it, the spring has to sit in. And what I found, a combination of this pick and these little bitty pliers. And if you winsle it down in there like that, you can 
right over it then take your pick and just like probe the back of it and you'll get it to lock back you'll get it to lock back in the other side it's an open-ended spring it's literally like a little bitty screen door fence spring like it's tiny but it goes back in it's pretty easy it's just tedious one of those things if i did another one this would probably take me 20 minutes to do it being real now that we got the spring on all right let's just pop these three bolts back in here clear some codes and let's see if we got this thing fixed something that i realized while i was doing all this this harness, once you have the flapper out, I hope you guys can see it right there where my index finger is. There's a body harness plug. I pulled, you can pop the two clips on either side of it and you pick up like three inches of travel with that harness. And that actually gave me the little bit of extra room I needed to get in there and like pop everything on and off. That ball, I put up a little petroleum jelly on it just to help it out, just make the joint a little bit smoother to lock in. Really made it a lot simpler. That's that, that's that. Everything's plugged in. Take that guy off. Remove my zip tie. And this thing's done. Let's get our mess cleaned up real quick and we'll clear some codes. All right, so some of you out there might not have a VADCOM or a VCDS or something like that. You just have your basic scan tool. That's fine. Uh, a lot of these newer cars, you can still use a random scanner on it or you can go to AutoZone. But my point here is, is once you get your part installed, you need to go back into the system. You're gonna need to clear out. Be sure you want to do it, carry this function to continue or exit at this point. So basically with the Varus and the way it hooks up, uh, you have to choose whether or not you want the codes to be cleared. So in my case, we cleared them. So let's see what happens. Oh, there's still a light there. Interesting. Let's try it again. Maybe it didn't take. All right, well, take two. Sometimes things don't always go as planned. And I uh, I started the car, the check engine light was still on after I cleared it and I was kind of like, hmm. Pop the cover off. And I didn't have the plug plugged in all the way. Feeling like a noob on my first day. So this code used to just keep populating. You could shut the car on and off and it would come right back. And now, this is so awful for a diesel. And there you go. That's how you fix the intake flapper implausible signal P2015 code permanently. Somehow the SEO, the AI got you here and you found value in this video, please let, every, let the rest of the world know. Smash that like button. It really helps me out, helps the channel out, and helps more. it helps more of your peers find content like this to fix problems like this that have been given to us because we like a specific type of car. Let's just be honest. This is a stupid problem. I'm thankful there's people out there like the Diesel Geeks that have made a part to support one of probably the most co controversial cars, at least engines, in present day. Like, the diesel gate has changed the game, both good and bad. And I'm not mad about it, I just think it's really odd. All right guys, well, that's what I'm gonna call it for tonight. If you are new to the channel and the AI got you here, consider subscribing. This is basically what we do every day on this channel, or we work on race car stuff for other engine, Audi engine rebuilds. So consider subscribing, and everyone else, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace, I'm Audi.